We've seen that the amount of diesel fuel used in our cover crop fields are cut by 30% compared to a conventional farmer. Uh, and that's a big sales tool for us. And we also can show them how to increase their yields by using covers. In, uh, <clears throat> in 1984, uh, when I made the conversion to no-till, then uh, by 1990 I had my own personal records of six years of uh, conservation tillage and conventional tillage versus six years of no-till. And remember that in that period of time, uh, diesel fuel was relatively expensive, uh, glyphosate was still under patent. But, uh, but my own personal numbers as far as liquidating um, larger tractors and, and uh, tillage equipment, uh, the reduced insurance interest cost and depreciation. Uh, even back when, when the process was fairly handicapped, uh, my numbers back then indicated $31 an acre advantage to producing with no-till. Now, obviously, I don't, haven't had any conventional records to compare since that point, but uh, intuitively, um, uh, glyphosate costs 10 to 12 percent of what it did then, and, and diesel fuel costs two to three times as much, so I'm confident that my advantage is still there. Well, I, I feel that healthy soils uh, give me healthy crops, uh, meaning that they have the right balance to uh, grow and the profitability uh, obviously is that I'm using my soils to produce that crop instead of purchasing uh, high inputs to replenish uh, the, what my soil can provide. The soil biology pays off from the cost of production because it's going to lower your cost of production. Um, and immediately, like if you were to make the transition right away, you say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change, I'm going to go to no-till, I'm going to adopt cover crops, I'm going to do all these, I'm going to have a diverse crop rotation. That immediately is not going to change anything. In fact, sometimes that can make you have a reverse problem where you forget that instead of feeding just the above ground, you're also feeding the below ground now. So now is not the time to be scrimping or anything, you've got to keep going. You may even have to add a little bit more, but we have to look at it in the long run. So if you make the transition, and in three years and five years, you're going to see that your cost of production is lower. You're going to use less gas, so less fuel to run over your acres. The, your, your planter or your seeder is going to take a lot less fuel to come through the soil because you're not, you don't have the resistance anymore. Um, you're also going to be doing one pass. The other thing that's going to happen is that you are either going to maintain and then stretch your yields, but more importantly, you're not going to need the same inputs or the same amount of inputs that you had before. You're still going to need some because we're still going to augment some things, but that doesn't mean that you're going to use the same amount you used before. And eventually you'll have more yield, less in, fewer inputs, better soil health, more nutrient value. It's a win for the pocketbook.